Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter's. Welcome on this wonderful weekend of Advent 3 in the Christian Church in which we rejoice in the coming of God's Son this Christmas season. May the Lord bless our worship as we have gathered in his name. And let us please arise as we join with our lighting of our Advent candles as printed responsibly on page 2. We light three Advent candles, remembering Jesus, the light of the world. He came to cast out the prince of darkness. We remember Jesus, who came in answer to his people's prayers. John proclaimed him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We hear his call to see the light. We light three Advent candles as a sign of our confidence and joy. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Through your word and spirit, may our souls be blessed. You may be seated for our opening hymn. the congregation to please arise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And, and also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. And by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. And may God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus Christ, and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance. Drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated for our scripture lessons. Our first lesson is taken from the prophet Malachi chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Over four centuries before Jesus' arrival, Malachi foretold that John the Baptist would prepare the hearts of the people for their advent of their king. He writes, Look, the day is coming, burning like a blast furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. The day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord of armies a day which will not leave behind a root or branch for them. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise, and there will be healing in its wings. You will go out and jump around like calves from the stall. You will trample the wicked. They will surely be ashes under, your soul, under the soles of your feet on the day when I take action, says the Lord of armies. Remember the law of my servant Moses, which I dictated to him at Horeb to serve as statutes and judgments over all Israel. Look, I am sending Elijah the prophet to you before the great and fearful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I would come and strike the land with complete destruction." This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Our second lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. The Apostle Paul gives us an inventory of the jewels that are to adorn our lives as we await the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not extinguish the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test everything. Hold on to the good. Keep away from every kind of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of our Lord. 
We now continue to the singing of our next hymn. Grace and mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for our devotion this evening and uh, sermon is printed for you on page 5 of your worship bulletins from the Gospel of John chapter 1. There it reads, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as an eyewitness to testify about the light so that everyone would believe through him. He was not the light but he came to testify about the light. This is the testimony John gave when the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny. He confessed, I am not the Christ. And then they asked him, Who are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? No, he answered. Then they asked him, Who are you? Tell us so we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one cry crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, just as Isaiah the prophet said. They had been sent from the Pharisees. So they asked John, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? I baptize with water, John answered. Among you, one, among you stands one you do not know. He is the one coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. These things happened in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this year, during the Christmas season, due to COVID-19, Santa is no longer allowed to visit children in person. He is no longer allowed to make his pre-Christmas public appearances. Right? Even though malls across the nation have their Santa villages and houses all set up, but there is no Santa to take pictures with because of close contacts and long lines of children are strictly 
prohibited. Even in other cities and public places, they have their winter wonderlands all set up, but there is not a single sight of Santa or his elves or reindeer anywhere. In many places this year, Santa is doing virtual visits with children. Evidently, Santa has figured out how to use modern technology and Zoom and Google Meets to talk with children about what is it they want for Christmas this year. And in one case, as Santa was doing a virtual visit with a little girl from Idaho, as Santa was sitting in his toy workshop, and as the two of them were talking back and forth, the little girl noticed that behind Santa was his big bay window that she could see outside, and she noticed clear blue sunny skies and palm trees that were swaying in the wind. The little girl was a little confused, because looking out that big bay window at the sunny skies and palm trees, it sure didn't look like the North Pole. And so when she asked Santa about it, well, Santa replied that he was working from his secret secondary work toy shop down in South America. You see, he had to soak in all the sunlight that he could before the cold, long, dark, wintry night of Christmas Eve. Well, it made perfect sense to the little girl from being from Idaho. She didn't see very much sun these days of winter and often had found even herself asking, where did the sun go? John the Baptist was a man who was sent by God to prepare the hearts of people for the coming of their Savior. John's mission was a very simple one. He was to go and preach repentance so that people would see a need for a Savior and believe in him. With all the hustle and bustle around the joy of Christmas time, even sometimes we too, as Christians, we just have a hard time focusing this time of year on our need to repent. There are parades to attend and there are work deadlines to meet. There are decorations to put out, presents to shop for, and company to get ready for. That sometimes we don't always seem to focus our hearts on the need for repentance. And lest we get so caught up in all the earthly and that we lose sight for the reason of the Christ child's appearing, all we are going to end up doing is that after Christmas is all over, we're going to turn around and find ourselves asking, well, where did the sun go? Christmas is about the coming of the sun, the Son of God, our Savior. The angels announced to the shepherds out in the fields, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. When the angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she would be the chosen mother of Jesus, she burst forth in a glorious song and said, my, my soul rejoices in God, my Savior. When the wise men would eventually make their way and bow low before the manger bed and in that house where Jesus was, there they would present their gifts before their newborn king and their savior. But it was John the Baptist who would stand among the people and he would preach repentance, calling all people to see the need for this savior. So many people use Christmas and use this time of year to ease their guilt and to make amends for the wrongs that they have done. Mothers can buy presents for their daughters as a way of making amends and making up for maybe the harsh words that they have spoken to them. Fathers can buy presents for their children and sons as a way of making up or making amends for the time that they sort of let go in spending time with them over this last year. Employers can buy presents for their employees as a way of making amends and making up for the times that they have treated them harshly or unfairly. 
Friends can even buy presents for other friends, sort of to make amends for the times that they acted selfishly or uncaring. But there is no present and there is no gift that we can give our God to make amends for the wrongs that we have committed against Him. We have had a whole year, once again, of speaking harsh words and being impatient. We've had a a whole year of being selfish in our relationships and harboring grudges and bitterness and hatred in our hearts, being gossips and so critical and condescending. And now that Christmas time is here, it's not really a time for us to stand up and give our gifts, but rather it's the time that we now fall to our knees and give our hearts in repentance, simply waiting for the Son of God to shine upon us, a Savior to come and save us from the darkness of hell. This Christ child, this Savior, this Jesus, the Scripture writes, He is the true light that gives light to every man. For he would come into this world shining with the light of God's purest grace. From that lowly manger bed would shine forth God's light of glory given in his one and only Son. A Son given who would one day be born, grow up, and one day give his life on a cross to save a world of sinners who couldn't save themselves. A son given so that through the shedding of his blood would come a river of forgiveness into our souls. A son and Savior who would shine with God's purest grace and glory as he would rise from the dead and seal unto you the gift of eternal life. Christmas is not about the ribbons and the bows. It's not about the garlands. It's not about the lights and the decorations. And it's certainly not about how many presents are underneath the tree. But Christmas is simply about coming to understand what it means to be personally forgiven before God. And that Christmas is simply to read time to rejoice in the salvation that that Christ child came to bring. When John the Baptist began his ministry, people had a hard time trying to figure out who he was. John the Baptist was out, he was preaching repentance, and the more he preached, the more people came out to listen to him, and the more people crowds and gathered around him, well, the more the religious leaders didn't know what to make of him. And so they sent word to John to ask him, Who are you? Are, are you claiming to be the Christ? Are you the, the prophet Elijah come back from the dead? Are you, are you a man of God? Or, are you a great prophet of the Lord? Who are you? And if you're none of those, well, then by what power or whose authority are you out here baptizing? And John's answer was very short and very clear. He simply said, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight paths for the Lord. I am the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy concerning the Messiah, the one who was to come to prepare the way before the Lord. And by baptizing, preparing the hearts of people to meet their Savior. John said, I'm not the Christ. But that Savior, he's coming after me. A Savior so great, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. John knew that he was just a lowly servant before the Lord his God. But when that Savior would come, and when that Savior would appear, he would come with mighty deeds and with great power. And little did Mary know, when she would give birth to her firstborn, a son, And when she would wrap him in those strips of cloth and then laid him in that manger bed so meek and so mild, little did she know that this son would eventually grow up and go out and display the wonders of God on earth. By the power of the Almighty, this child would one day go out and heal the sick, 
and make the blind to see. He would make the lame to walk and the deaf to hear. He would one day go out and he would calm storms and he would feed thousands. He would calm the waters, walk on water, drive out demons, and even raise the dead. But his greater acts and his greatest acts of power would be seen in the salvation of his people. Jesus even spoke about himself concerning Isaiah's prophecy as he said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It was those angels out on that first Christmas Eve who announced to the shepherds, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And then later on, it would be those same angels who would once again sing in heaven's glory as they sang out, To you all praise, honor, and glory, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchase men for God from every nation, tribe, people, and language. No wonder when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming down the road, he looked at that coming Savior and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Here comes your Savior. Prepare your hearts to meet him and rejoice in the salvation that he came to bring. This Christmas season, the sun is coming. And I guess that's true in more ways than one. December 21st marks the shortest day of the year. It is the shortest and longest, darkest day of the year. But after December 21st, the days start getting longer and the sun begins to reappear. This Christmas season is a time that we rejoice that the sun is coming to appear. And may this Christmas season, may you rejoice in that sunlight the Son of the very God, our Lord. And may his glory of his salvation forever shine in your hearts and in your homes and in your lives. Amen. Amen. Invite the congregation to please arise. Let us now join in confessing our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time the congregation may be seated as we now worship the Lord with our offerings. prayers of the church this evening we include a special prayer on behalf of our brother in Christ and our member Dean Kirstenstein who has been hospitalized with COVID-19 and we pray that the Lord would continue to heal him strengthen him um, in the days to come we pray eternal father throughout the centuries you repeated and affirmed your promise to send the offspring of the woman to crush the serpent's head through your prophets of old, you continually directed the eyes of your people 
to the advent of their Savior. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King, use your mighty word to shatter our pride and to rouse us from spiritual slumber and apathy. May you direct our eyes not only to the manger, but also to the skies, where we will see your Son coming again, not as a lowly child, but as the Lord of Lords. And Lord, this day we ask that you bring your healing upon your servant, Dean Kirstenstein, who has been hospitalized with virus. May you relieve his distress, may you strengthen him day by day, and may you also strengthen his faith and grant him recovery according to your will. All these things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, and in whose name we also join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continue with the singing of our next hymn. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 We close with our final hymn.